If this were a guessing game and you were guessing what this was, quite apart from the fact that it's a lot of cement that's gone and got cracked, but if the uh, shapes meant anything and you were guessing about them, why, how about it being a, a head there on the left and a, a buffalo's uh, hump? A little anthill on top of it, and uh, the two legs, two forelegs. But then instead of um, rear legs, the thing seems to have another head. So it's a two headed, two legged uh, buffalo uh, ant heap. Well, that's all right for one guess. Now, if you really want to know what it's all about, I'll tell you. It's about drawing shapes made by cracks. Why? Simply because they give you a feeling of new shapes, new composition, and also they help you um, have a whole fund of practice behind you when you're doodling. You're doodling for your own shapes. So I used to practice drawing shapes that were formed by cracks in pavements or in stone or cement. And um, some I'll show you later in uh, the end of logs, the cracks in the wood. But not only that, you see the delicate line you can, you know, it's got an aesthetic effect there. And uh, here is some nice tonal stuff with little uh, growing cracks in it, like a spreading type thing. And that shape up there on the left, that's a good shape. You see? And here is another crack, like a type of river. And a uh, little stream meandering down through some stone plain. Watch this. Maybe a uh, Somebody dropped a blueberry pie, a bit of an explosion of some sort. Here's a compositional effect. That's a nice uh, tone there on the lower left, out of which uh, is nesting very snug, these other linear effects. And here is a great uh, splitting, as if tremendous energy has just pulled them apart, and you've got a kind of a canyon chasm, anyway. Now here is a, a flaking, and that's a, a very delicate line indeed up there on the left, going from the lower flaking up to the right angle there and going on left. Now here is a quite a different cracking, a cross crack, kind of, uh, I suppose, caused by some tremendous weight suddenly put on it there. And uh, here's another quite different tonal effect. Maybe two different mixes, and it cracked along the difference of the two mixes where they met. While here we have uh, laminations of stone and uh, flakings, the layers are flaking off and giving you these different shapes. Now what I'm getting at really is the fact that I was unconsciously obsessed with drawing these type shapes because uh, actually they gave me a feeling that they had significance, gave my unconscious attraction to them, uh, was due to their um, uh, relation to energy, that none of these crackings and fissures and strains and stresses and um, stretchings and breakings were due to anything but some sort of energy, the heat and the cold and the extremes of uh, uh, some sort of happening underneath that ran along a particular form, a formation underneath them, and created these kind of shapes. And I was tuning into this world, this atomic, this molecular world of identity in uh, relation to energy. Now here's the thing, uh, that's the slicing of a brick when the clay is wet. And uh, in the crevices, you get a new 
kind of energy, living energy, formation of moss taking root. By sketching the marks and cracks at the end of a log, the uh, stain of the seeping saps, I get a feel for the um, inner structure of wood, the growing tree. And uh, you're with it, you're staying with it, you're you're feeling it into your pencil. And uh, I look at these things and I don't think of anything like that. I just draw and uh, I get the feel. I no doubt get the feel, the unconscious association of nature with my own natural form of being, my circulation and blood and bone. And uh, here are some of the sketches, for instance, out of my book, Splashes, and uh, peculiar Japanese-type shapes. There's a group. This sketch is derived from uh, very flaky skin peelings. Makes quite a nice uh, abstract composition. All you have to do is pick the abstractions you feel an affinity with, and you're in the abstract business. And here is a staccato looking thing, almost uh, like the sound of some sort of wooden glockenspiel music. More sketches. There's a larger version of that, the indices, the way they uh, fit like a jigsaw. Then here are some veinings and uh, I liken those veinings to this sketch, this child sketch by a five-year-old. And uh, it has, to me, similar feelings of line to the previous, which you've just uh, seen, previous slide. And here are some uh, stone shapes, rock shapes. And I got that postcard from the uh, Natural History Museum. And uh, my daughter, Yancy, looked at it and turned the card over and she did her version of the same thing. That's a real old brain version. And uh, here she is doing another thing, which has all the feel of these natural shapes. You see, under the bark of the tree, what you get? And here's another natural shape. It happens to be a gene molecule. And here's another old brain, archaic brain in action by Yancey. And here's one in action by me. And here's a wilder one in the same vein. So what? Well, it's somewhat like the way the scientist traces the tracks of an elusive particle of energy in a cloud chamber. He does that to uh, help him isolate the ray, the particle's characteristics. And in much the same way I do that with my old, primitive, unconscious brain, I develop a feeling for the inner structure of identity. I get uh, a sensory, a bodily feel for its um, nature. And this helps me in my doodling to come up with um, a way of developing my primitive brain to get a deep level of imagery.